What's going on, everyone? Uh, this is going to be a very, very quick video, um, but I, I feel like it needs to exist. Uh, it's going to be part of our looping course, and it's dumb mistakes I've made when it comes to looping. There's a couple of like straight up super, super stupid things that I did when it came to looping, and I'm like, please don't make those mistakes. It's very, very frustrating and sucky to fix, and like really, ugh. when I did it, I was like, oh my god, this is so, so frustrating. Um, so. Very first thing that I want you guys to think about uh, when you're going into looping, which is something that I was not super, super like aware of, is noise bleed. So basically what happens is when you are re recording something, noise bleed is unwanted noise that is coming into the audio signal. So like if I'm recording a guitar part, that is, you know, the singing of my voice being picked up in the pickups of my guitar. And that's like super frustrating it sounds like this um baby you a song i know no i'm in love with the shape of what's a cool one no diggity uh i like the way you work it we'll do it like i like the way you work it no diggity i gotta bag it up yeah so i'm pretty sure we can hear my voice if you listen really really closely you might hear the faint sound of, I like the way you work it. And now, um, depending on your room, depending on the room, depending on the microphone in your guitar, be aware that that stuff will come through. And uh, say you're doing a recording and you'd like really strip back your, li your loop and then you just hear in the background you singing the verse or you like coughing or like someone coughing in the crowd. The amount of times that's happened at the beginning of my career where I was like, I, I had a microphone, right? And sometimes I, so the way I did it was I, um, I had a, I had a microphone with a switch and I, I was so dumb that I wouldn't turn off the switch sometimes. So I'd record my loop. I'm like, boo -chick -boo -chick -boo -chick -boo, and then I would turn off the, I didn't turn off the, I had to make it a habit, but sometimes I'd leave it on and then it would be recording. Uh, anytime I would go to record a loop, especially with the RC 300, it was always picking this up. And so it would pick up the audio of like someone in the crowd laughing like, ha, 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 ha. and then like halfway through my loop, I'm like playing and I'm like doing a guitar solo and I just hear, ha, 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 ha. and you're like, I was so good. Why did this fail miserably? Um, so 100% noise bleed, be aware of it. Uh, you pick up microphone signals from your guitar. You will pick up microphone signals from your microphones. Uh, you are not immune to it typically the smaller the room like the smaller the room the quieter the room the easier the sound will get picked up on the pickups that's what i found so in my studio i will hear my vocals come through my pickup quite quite often so that's why i try not to sing i try not to sing and, and loop at the same time so if i do do that and i'm going to be like i will typically pick i will sing softer so i try not to get it picked up on the guitar but in a live setting, usually it doesn't get picked up that well. But that's the way my guitar pickup works. You might have like a microphone set up one and it will pick up the foldback of your um, of your, uh, your loop and that'll be really annoying. That's the same concept goes for your beatbox mic, right? So when you're picking your workflow, sometimes the foldback that you might have or the whatever audio source you might have, like your, your amp or things like that, Say if you record the beat after you've recorded already recorded your chords and stuff, you might be doing your beat and in the background of your beat, um, like your beatbox, there'll, there'll be like a guitar chord strumming. So the way you fix this is you kind of like cup your hand around the microphone to stop any extra noise coming in that's gonna mess with it and, and make your life living hell uh, as a looper. So. Those are the, that's the first one that's really frustrating. Noise bleed. Be aware of it. It is your enemy. It's not fun. Um, learn how to manage it and figure out your ways. Uh, the second one is not understanding EQ, which is equalization, which is like if you've seen maybe in your like car speaker or your iPod or things like that, you have like bass, middle, treble. Um, same thing on guitar amps, things like that. So basically um, you need to separate your tracks uh, through the volume of the mix of whatever you've got on your pedal and then you need to EQ that track uh, correctly. So like say for instance, I was using RC300 um, 
typically I would have to like EQ the bass to pop out like the beatbox because I want to get that kick. Uh, and then I would make sure that I would like try and take out other frequencies. So you can mess around with this stuff. You will find that your voice has different reactions. The chords have different reactions, but not being aware that this exists is a huge downside. You don't want to just randomly get your loop pedal and plug it in. Now this, this pairs into the next one, which is getting the mix right. You want to make sure your mix is very clean. Now with the RC300, you can set the different levels on the RC300. And then with the Looper X, you've obviously got like four outputs. Um, sorry, I just better put, I better put this, uh, the Looper X here in the, in the video so you guys can see what's going on. So you can see here with the Looper X, I have four outputs. These, these ones just up here, those four outputs. Each one of them is going to its own separate channel on Ableton and I can mix them all correctly however I want. So my bass, my guitar track has its own track, my bass has its own track, my drums has its own track, and my vocals have its own track. So everything's EQ'd mixed completely separately. And that's the beauty of this pedal, but for the RC300, you have to do that all in the pedal in one go and change like a lot of your effects as they enter the pedal. So that's the frustrating thing, but we'll go into more RC300 stuff. But getting the mix right is really important. Um, typically on the RC300, I will boost the channel that has the drums in the bass so that I can get the drums in the bass to really like punch out. And then I will actually drop the chord stuff and the vocal stuff so that it's not overpowering my singing or it's not overpowering my guitar playing. Um, so that I can solo over it very cleanly, but I would kind of like boost the bass and drums and then that would help me build my mix very, very clearly. But yeah, being aware that the mix is important is a huge thing. Um, and then two other things, not experimenting. You want to, when you're getting into looping is try stuff. Uh, if you watch me on my stream, I am becoming like, I would say pretty, pretty cavalier about my exp experimentation when it comes to stuff like, uh, I said in May that I, oh no, February, my goal was like, I can't remember, was it January or February was my goal. I, w I wanted to get into vocal looping and uh, and I was very much strong armed by by our community. They were like, hey, we haven't heard your vocal loop. And, but as soon as I started doing it, I was getting more comfortable and I kept trying and trying. And that was one of the, like the pillars of looping that I was very shy about testing. And every time, every single time uh, I would not do things, uh, that was like a detriment. Um, so just, and now I'm at a point where I'm like, if it might work, I'm going to give it a try. And we've discovered so many cool loops since then. So um, yeah, you really want to give it a good crack. Jump in, have heaps of fun. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to try new things. Really give the, if you have an idea, really let the idea flesh out before you like write it off. Um, and then the other thing is uh, not spending money. Uh, I know it's a, it's like, it might be controversial, controversial for people, but like <sighs> gear, especially equipment like that, that exists these days. Don't try and half ass it. Like if you're going to get like, if you're going to try and make things work because you're like, oh, I'm on a budget. It's like, honestly, you're better served going and getting some like really crap you know, nine to five job, like literally some like minimum wage job laboring. I don't care, like figure it out, you know, find something that will generate revenue. Um, like it, buying the right thing is going to make your life so much easier. Um, like this Sheeran Looper X is super cheap for what it does. It's $2,500 Australian, has all the effects inbuilt. The workflow is amazing. It's so great. It has four outputs. You've got heaps of control. But, you know, some people are like, oh, I need to get the RC30. But then some people, like for me, I had the Boss GT10 and I was trying to make the Boss GT10 sound like an RC300. Doesn't work. Do not try to do it. You will fail miserably, absolutely miserably. You hit that 37 second loop back that it has uh, and it will repeat. And so you're screwed. You can't even loop songs past 30, 37 seconds, which is, are you kidding me? Um, so like... You can be like clever, but I would discourage being clever with um, use that cleverness to go get a job to pay for the cool, cool stuff and then go quit that job and then just do your thing. 
Um, that's how I would approach it. Uh, I know it's like unpopular opinion, but seriously, like even if it's like get a job at Macca's, work minimum wage for like a month, then buy something. I, I have, I'm completely out of context with how much money you can make at Macca's per week. But if you have spare time and you don't mind eating shit for a little bit, just go get some form of job, go labor, go do things, um, and, uh, make it happen. Like, when I wanted my guitar, you see that white guitar over there, the white Strat? I said to my dad, and my dad, you know, bless his heart, he has always been a super, super giving and helped me out and always given me and my brother all really, really great stuff and stuff, things like that. Um, kept us nice and entitled, but also very grounded. Uh, but I was like, hey, this guitar is for sale. Can I please, like, have money for it? And he's like, I mean, you can work for it. And I was like all right, let's do it. So I worked for like nearly two weeks straight and I, um, I, I was a laborer for, for a tiler. He was tiling and a, we grouted a commercial kitchen uh, from 10 p.m. till f- six in the morning. So you got to do what you got to do. Uh, and then by the end of the two weeks, uh, all the money I had earned from that, uh, I spent on that guitar, which was like a thousand bucks. So... <laughs> I had a, I had a hundred dollars extra, so strings. There you go, strings and a guitar, uh, and then also I had to pay for uh, a chiropractor appointment because my back got fucked up straight away. Straight away, my lower back was like I do li- I do a little bit of laboring and my back is screwed. But yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. So um, yeah, spend the money on good gear because good gear will help you and it will save you time and it won't st- like like the amount of headaches that I solved by just buying the thing that was the exact thing I needed. Just like, ah, best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. Anyway, that's enough for this video. Let's get into some more looping stuff and let's have some fun. Catch you guys soon. Oh yeah.